Are you all ready for the word? Open up your Bibles. Go to James chapter 1. Pastor Kevin went too long on the announcement, so, so Bishop Kevin's going to have to shorten a little bit on the message. Amen. James chapter 1. I'm going to begin in verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith. Say, ask in faith. With no doubting, for he who doubts is like the wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Say, I am not unstable. I am a person of faith. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. As a believer, that's the way you walk. Just like you exist by breathing constantly in and out. And we plan on breathing like that as long as we're living in this world. A believer lives by faith. Faith has to be like your oxygen to exist. And so in everything that you do, you walk by faith. You live by faith. You, you talk faith. You, you, you act faith in everything you do. It's all faith. Because when you walk by faith, you're walking in the kingdom of God. When you walk by faith, you're no longer operating according to what you see or what you feel or, or what you think about a situation. You're operating according to the word of God. And the word of God will give you hope. The word of God will give you answers to your problems. The word of God is truth. And you cannot change truth. It is the foundation of our life is God's word. Amen. So we walk by faith and not by sight. Say, I walk by faith and not by sight. And I want to talk to you about faith and feelings because too many people, they start off in faith, but then they go off into feelings. And that's a lie. Feelings are a lie. Feelings are like the wind that blows in and blows out. It's, it's rainy one day. It's like the weather. It rains one day and it's sunny the next. And you cannot live your life in feelings and expect to experience the peace of God. You have to walk by faith and not by sight. Don't let your feelings overtake your faith. You have to solidify your, your, your faith in God in spite of what you're feeling. Because your feelings will change. Every time there's a situation that rises up. It is an opportunity for you to be promoted. It's an opportunity for you to increase in faith. It's an opportunity for you to see God do something in your life that you have never seen him do before. And it's an opportunity for you to trust God with all your heart. But as long as you, you take a step back and allow your feelings to overtake you, you stop operating under the blessings of God and you start operating under the strength of your hand and you're not strong enough to fight the battles that are coming your way. You don't, you, you, you don't make a good God to yourself. Amen. You can't answer your prayers. But there is a God who's faithful. There is a God who loves you. There is a God who is an ever-present uh, help in your time of need. I don't need a Savior. I have a Savior. His name is Jesus. And he, he is there to save you every single time. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them of them all. So if you're going through something right now, if there's some tribulation happening in your life, there's some things that are going on where your world seems to be rocked, I want you to get ready for your salvation. Your salvation is drawing near. God is faithful to answer your prayers. God is faithful to answer your need. He's an ever-present help in your time of need. But you will never know that unless you go through some tribulation in faith. You'll never know it unless you fully trust in God. 
when you get a bad report, when you're going through something where maybe everybody has left you and you feel like you're all alone, God will never leave you. He will always be there for you. And you can trust him that he will see you through. Amen? So we have to walk by faith. Not by sight or not by our feelings. Our feelings will always lead to fear. Unless, they're been, unless they've been redeemed and changed because you've been walking by faith so long, your feelings will always start to lead you to fear. And you have to recognize that that fear is alive from, the he from hell, trying to steal and kill and destroy you. Some of, the greatest, some of the greatest fights that you go through or the tribulations that you go through or the challenges you go through, you know, you might have thought, oh, man, I'm going to, to, to end up in death. I'm not going to make it. But somehow, some way, you made it, and you get to the other side, but because a person was walking by fear, they are broken, they have unforgiveness, they have pain in their heart, they have shame in their life because they allowed that fear to take them through hell all the way through it. And they lost their peace, they lost their joy, they lost their self in, that, in the middle of that trial. But when you walk by faith, when you walk by faith and the challenge comes... Instead of drawing back in fear and crying and worrying and stressing out, you dive into the Word of God and you find out your answer through the Word of God. And the Word of God becomes your answer to every single thing. A doctor says, the doctor might give you a report of cancer, but Jesus has given you a report that by his stripes you are healed. I know you, so you gave me that report of cancer, but I got a report of total healing by the stripes of Jesus Christ. So this thing might be a temporary situation, but it's not my permanent destination. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. I will not fear. I will not worry. I will not stress. I'm going to walk in perfect peace, worshiping my God. Yeah. Amen. If you believe that, shout amen. Yeah. See, that's the believer's life. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. The difference, you know, it's going to rain on all of us. But the difference is when you have the word of God, you have an umbrella. You're being covered by the Lord. Amen. And you're going to have the victory in Jesus' name. Say, I have the victory in Jesus' name. When you walk by faith, you get excited about what's going to happen at the end of the trial. You already see that at the end of the game, you win. It might be stressful in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. It might seem like your, your team is not going to make it, but by the end of the match, there's going to be a comeback that's going to happen. And when the final whistle is blown, you win in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, I am a winner. When you walk by faith, you will be a winner every single time. Instead of being broken and defeated at the end of the journey, you would be thankful, giving God praise, and can't wait to tell people your testimony, how the Lord healed you, how the Lord restored you, how the Lord provided for you, how God answered your prayers. That's what a man or woman of God, that's their testimony, amen. They have victory in Jesus' name, amen. And see, the Word of God says here in verse 5, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. See, the problem is not that you're going through a situation. The problem is that you need wisdom from the Lord regarding your situation. There's a lot of people, they, they get mad at God. Oh, well, I was standing in faith. I was believing that God was going to take care of, of my health. Yeah, but did you get wisdom from God? Is there something that you were doing to your body that destroyed your health? See, God can't overpower your will, but he will give you wisdom to put you back in order. There was this one young lady I was speaking to the other day. She began to have these, these problems with her, her body, and, and the doctors gave her all these bad reports, and she didn't understand why her body was acting so, so sick and, and, and so tired. She had all these illnesses. And she was spending time with God, and God gave her this phrase, and she wrote it down. It was, a, it was, this, 
it was this unusual name. I wish I had it, but I didn't have it. It was this unusual phrase. It was a name, but it was like a scientific name. And when she went on the internet and, and typed it out on the computer, it was, it was baking soda. And then she reminded, she thought, you know what, how's this happening to my, and then she looked at her toothpaste, and the toothpaste had too much baking soda, and she stopped using it, and all her sicknesses went away. That is the wisdom of God. God will speak to you. He'll give you knowledge and wisdom on how to do things that, that, that you are not able to do on your own. Amen. How many thank God for the wisdom of God? And that's why when we go through trials, that's why we have to pray. We have to go before God and find out his answer for our situation. Amen. We have to get into the word of the Lord. There is no excuse for laziness in the body of Christ. Pastor Kevin cannot preach to you everything that you need for your, every answer that you're going to need. I try, but I'm not God. And I'm definitely not the Holy Spirit, amen. And so you need to search out the word of the Lord. You need to search out God in your private time. You need to pray. Hit your neighbor and say, you need, you need to pray more. Someone says, why do, you make them hit, why do you make your people hit each other so they'll remember it? <laughs> and so we have to ask God for wisdom for whatever situation you're going through. Instead of asking God, Lord, Lord, take this away from me. Lord, give me wisdom so I don't have to go through this again. Amen. Start asking God for wisdom and let him direct your tongue on what you need to say and what you need to do. Amen. In Deuteronomy 29, verse 29, it says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever. Every time you go before God and you receive something from the Lord, that is not just for you, but it's for your children as well. God gives you an answer, a direction. He begins to give you a truth, that something that, that, that you never knew. You're able to bless your kids. I thank God for my father. He taught me how to pray. He taught me how to walk by faith, amen, because he, he was able to draw out truths through the word of God and speak it into my life, amen. But there's also the truths that are out there that you need to partake of. There are some people that are doing business without business principles, and then they get angry at God that their business is not prospering. The Bible says that he gives you dominion over the works of his hands. God created everything for you. He said, he, he said have dominion. Everybody say dominion. So everything God created, he gives you dominion over it through Jesus Christ now. The earth belongs to the Lord, the gold, the silver, the wood, everything belongs to God, amen? And he gives you dominion over it. In other words, you have to be a good manager of God's blessings. Can I say that again? You have to be a good manager of God's blessings. God will not go against his principles. If you're not faithful with what God has blessed you with, what makes you think that God's going to bless you with more? If your business is struggling... Check your business practices. Are you doing what's right? Are you investing in the right areas? Did you cut it down on the things that are not profitable? Are you trying to do a business that nobody wants to buy? God cannot supersede those things. And so you have to do what's right so that God can bless you. There's no excuse not learning how to be a good manager of the blessings of God. You know one lesson that you'll never learn in school? How to manage your money. Think about that. You go 12, 13, 16 years, 20 years of school, and not one class on how to teach you how to manage your money. It's because that's a curse that they want everybody to live in because it pushes you into debt. It pushes you into, into slavery, to debt. You have to step out of the system and say, I'm going to now manage my money. I'm going to manage the strength that God has given me. I'm going to manage my time. I'm going to manage my health. I'm going to be a good steward of what God has blessed me with, the things that he tells me to do, and also the things that have been revealed already, they belong to you. If you don't know what to do, Google it. 
Amen? I'm always learning. I'm always trying to, to become better because I know if I do a good job increasing in my life that I'll be a good pastor to you. I'll be a good blessing to you. Amen? There's things I learned that have absolutely nothing to do with pastoring, but I know that you're doing this. So I'll learn it so I can give you advice. Amen? Say, put things in order. Amen? And then the last thing I want to encourage you, and then we're going to honor God with our, with our finances, honor God with our tithes and offerings. You have to take it into the spirit. Amen? You take it into the spirit because the enemy will come at you in many ways. And there are things that are hidden that you don't know what's happening. Sometimes we get so stressed and so confused and we don't know what to do. But when you take it into the spirit, it's, you get alone with God. When you get, go into your closet and shut the door and just get on your face before God and begin to worship him, you go into the intimacies of God. You begin to pour out your spirit upon God, praying in the Holy Ghost. The angels of the Lord will come and begin to minister to you in the presence of the Lord. God will begin to remove the cloud off your life and begin to put peace and joy in his presence. Amen. And as you are spending time with God, God will give you secrets. How many of you want the secret things of God? He will give you secrets. He'll give you direction. He'll give you peace that cannot be taken away from you. Amen. He will give you so much encouragement. He'll give you a word to begin to speak over your life. And that word will supersede everything else that's trying to destroy it. There's, it's not a coincidence. I keep on telling you, I got a bucket. Why? Because when I spent time with God, God told me, we're going to build and we're going to bless. And God began to speak to me. He says, I'm giving you a bucket. I'm giving you a, 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 a vessel that will, not, that will not run dry. I will fill it up every time you pour it out. To me, that sounded like a bucket. So when I look at the prices and I look at the things that need to happen, material and labor and, and construction and permits, and I look at all that, I don't, I don't worry because I got a bucket. Amen. Amen. Pastor Kevin, you're kind of crazy that way. Well, I'm walking with God. Amen. And come January 1st, 2020, you tell me who's crazy. When you see everything renovated, paid in full, you tell me who's crazy. You tell me, you tell me who is crazy. The ones that criticize from the world and say you're not able to do it. Or God had told me he has a source and a supply that will not run dry. I want to tell you that my God is true. Let God be true and everybody else be a lie. Amen. Hallelujah. He is faithful. He is faithful. Amen. But here's the beautiful thing. Here's the beautiful thing. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so, ha. Here's the most beautiful thing about this. The bucket's not just for 2019. I plan on using it in 2020 and 21 and 22 and 23, 24 and 25 and just keep going as long as the Lord has me here in this world. Amen. The Lord told me I'll never have to worry about money again. Amen. So even when I don't have, I have because I have his word, and his word supersedes what I don't have in, in my hands. Amen. Whatever I lack will be supplied. Amen. And if God gave me that word, why don't you take it for yourself as well in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, the, you know, it's beautiful. It says, it says, the things that are hidden belong to God, but the things that have been re revealed belongs to man and his children. How many of you are my spiritual children in this, in this church? So it belongs to you as well, amen. Yeah. Receive your bucket from heaven, amen, that will not run dry in Jesus' name. Come on, give God praise if that's you. If that's you, give God praise. So you could dream big. You could believe God for great things. You could grow knowing that God will back you up with his power and his anointing, amen. Hallelujah. Say, I walk by faith and not by feelings. I'm going to be led by the Holy Ghost. Not by fear. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Did you receive that word today? Praise God. Let's go and honor God with our tithes and offerings. If you need an envelope, there's an envelope in front of your chair. For those that are watching on television, many of you have already become members of the church. You just don't know it. 
Every Sunday you're watching this. Every Sunday you're blessed. We have, we have brothers. We have, we have church members in prisons. We have church members in, in, in all over this valley, amen, because you're part of the family. You're hearing the word of God. You're growing in the things of God, amen. And so I want to encourage you to honor God as well. As we, we honor God with our tithes and offerings, you could give as well. You go online to our, fa- our website, faithpleasesgod.com, or call that number, and they will give you more instructions on how to honor God uh, through this ministry. Amen. And we thank God for you. Amen. We're praying for God's blessing upon your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's a good God. He's a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're going to walk with any type of emotion, it should be a motion of love and joy and peace. Amen. If you're angry, frustrated, and beat up, you know, I'm going to throw you in a closet somewhere and say, have it out. (laughs) Have it out with God. Don't come out until you got your breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes when you walk, when you get home, there's a spirit of anger and spirit of fear in your house. You know, when you walk in, you recognize it, open that door. I command that devil of anger and fear to get out in the name of Jesus. Get out in the name of Jesus. Amen. And, and, and if that anger and spirit and that fear spirit wants to remain, just lift up the worship a little longer. Amen. A little higher. Amen. Make sure everything is hearing the praises and the glory of God. Amen. It has to go in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord.